So we're gonna play the worst golf course in America. And Tiger owns this. Okay, so he doesn't actually own the course, but I did find out he did donate over $50 million towards this course. More on that later in the video. Oh my God. Is there health insurance something? <laughs> Hope so. So I couldn't help but wonder as I'm driving by the Goodyear blimp and the Porsche experience across the street from it. Why does a course get to these kind of extreme conditions? So when I got home, I did a little bit of researching. So here's some of the information I found out. Back in 1965, the Links of Victoria and Corsons opens up. It's built on top of a former site of the BKK Carson's Landfill, which operated from 1948 to 1960. While a number of golf courses in Southern California were built on former landfills, this one seemed to be a little bit more challenging than the rest. Now I understand why the uh, guy at the shop said, if you finish. Because <laughs> this is. I think we spent 20 minutes on this. So William F. Bell, the son of William P. Bell, who also was a golf course designer, original designer actually, of Torrey Pines and also co-designed the Riviera Country Club and combined the father-son duo, created over 300 golf courses across 10 states, mostly in the West and in Southern California. So in stark contrast to the rest of the fairway, how do you feel about the greens? These greens are surprisingly amazing. Like these actually look pretty good. Now I know why they give you a sleeve with these marathon balls. Because <laughs> they know you're going to lose at least three in the first two holes. I lost two to a pool of water that was not supposed to be there. This par 72 <laughs> course is the longest course in the LA system with the tips measuring at over 6,800 yards. The course has suffered extreme issues with the fairways due to irrigation, methane gas emissions, along with land move. What looked to be similar conditions to now back in 1999, in 2001, the city decided to move forward with placing several feet of topsoil to help combat the former soil issues. Everything they scream. Sir, fix your divot, please. Thank you. This That's is what happens when you don't fix your divot. Why is there no tutorials on how to hit out of mud? When the whole course is mud. Holy oh boy. How? Meanwhile, somewhere between 2001 and 2016, a nearby Huntington Beach water energy innovation company named Vico LLC purchased the property. On the bright note, Found grass. Unfortunately, this looks like this is what led to the demise of this course. While well, during the 2017 summer, they did update the driving range and practice areas. Later in 2017, that company would default on lease payments and fail to perform routine maintenance, which would start the property to fall into disrepair. That's when in 2017, the LA Department of Parks and Recreation officials negotiated on finding a property operator. The company they chose, the Plenitude LLC, along with the Kemmelman Foundation for an investment of $800,000. But you're a part of every <laughs> and it was preemptively known these entities had no interest in updating or maintaining this course. The Kemmelman Foundation is named after Errol Lulu Kemmelman, who was a member of the 1983 undefeated USC Women's National Championship tennis team. Later on in life, she would go on to become an elementary school teacher at South Central LA's Elementary School. Unfortunately, she tragically passed in 2017 of ovarian cancer. Her husband, Doug Kemmelman, wanted to keep her memory alive and started the foundation in her honor. At the 2017 ESPYs Awards, Doug won the award for the ESPYs Sports Humanitarian Award. In an interview with ESPY, the plan is to build what we hope to be the largest community tennis center in the western U.S., 40 courts, combine it with a 35,000 square foot academic center. And this is about the time Tiger Woods and his TGF Foundation comes into the picture. They would step up big time with a $50 million donation towards the project to help build one of Tiger Woods' learning centers there. And 
to think somebody gave these people money to play today. Yeah. Mm. Oh, free yeah, mushrooms? Yeah. Along with the Athletic and Academic Center, there's plans for the southern 87 acres of this course to include a development called the Creek at Dominguez Hills. Plans include a 200,000 square foot multi-use complex, which was to accommodate basketball, volleyball, indoor soccer, along with baseball and softball training centers. Next to this complex would include an 18,000 square foot retail administrative area next to a jogging route. Also, there was to be included with this a Flying Tees Entertainment Area, including these plans was to be three par three practice holes. The expected completion date of all this was planned to be late 2021 to early 2022. Oh, we're like off roading right now. Ridiculous. It seems like not everyone was just as excited about these plans and the potential loss of the 50 year old public course. In August of 2021, it looks like the citizens of Carson took these matters to vote. While I cannot find any hard evidence of the results of this vote, it does seem as looking at this course, the citizens did win. Let it go. of January of 2022 right now, the Pentitude Holdings LLC along with the Kimmelman Foundation pulled out with their plans of the Carol Kimmelman Athletic and Academic Center in late 2021. Perhaps we'll try and build this tennis utopia elsewhere or maybe try again later, I'm not sure. While plans for the creek at Dominguez Hills seems to theoretically still be in the work, the website on this development hasn't been updated since 2020 and the last Instagram post was of May 29th of 2019. We're still left with a course that's stuck in purgatory with every day passing. It just becomes more and more of a wasteland. While I obviously don't know all or really any of the business aspects of this course and the people involved in all these plans, I do like the idea of helping the youth with these extravagant plans. While at the same time, I do commend the community for trying to save their course. Just with the current state of the course, along with what seems to be major and expensive issues with this course's fairways, I feel like it's fair to say this course has been lost for years as it's currently unplayable. While I hope there's a solution to this once great course. My optimism is rather low on when or if this course will ever be green again. Robbie, so far, what would you rate this course? I love spending time with my friend. 